Good morning and welcome to the worship service of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church coming from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. In this time of crisis, we've had to learn to adapt to a whole new situation in order to serve our church family. While many of you watching this do not see all the work done behind the scenes, I want to acknowledge those who have shared their time, their talents, and their treasure in order to produce these worship services every week. A big thank you from us all. This morning, we are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. We could say it's the church's birthday. Forty days after Jesus rose from the grave, he is taken up into heaven. And today we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit given to his followers, which empowered the church to be a witness throughout the world, even to today. While we cannot meet at this time to worship together, it's our hope and prayer that this service blesses you in some way. If it has plea, if it has, please let us know and feel free to contact us with any prayer requests that you may have. The Spirit came and your church was born in wind and fire and words of power. The Spirit came blowing fear aside and in its place weak hearts were stronger. The Spirit came as your word foretold with dreams and signs, visions and wonders. The Spirit came and is here today to feed the hearts of a world that hungers. Breathe in us, O Holy Spirit, that our thoughts may all be holy. Act in us, O Holy Spirit, that our works too may be holy. Draw our hearts, O Holy Spirit, that we may love what is holy. Strengthen us, O Holy Spirit, to defend what is holy. Guard us then, O Holy Spirit, that we always may be holy. In your name we pray. Amen. Today we gather for Pentecost Sunday. Now, 50 days since Easter, this is the day when we as a church commemorate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ while they were in Jerusalem celebrating the Feast of Weeks. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jews. Today, we have come together in our homes, and we too can be fearful people. Sometimes we are afraid of the changes in our world, afraid of making decisions, afraid of standing alone, afraid of being different afraid of criticism, afraid of loss, afraid of sickness. That day, behind locked doors, Jesus came and stood among them. Let us be reminded of what he said. Peace be with you. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life
Spirit of the living Lord, tell us of God's mercy and faithfulness. Witness to us God's hope and justice. Where we have not followed Christ, direct our paths. Where we have not commanded your praise, rebuke our hearts. Come to us in this time of brokenness and defeat. Minister to us in this time of famine and chaos. Forgive us, O God, and remind us of your enduring love. Breathe your spirit upon our lives and make us holy and one. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us praise the one who sets us free. Won't you be my neighbor? 
It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for neighbors. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Well, hi, neighbor. Today we're going to talk about community helpers. In these days of coronavirus where we have to stay at home and stay the blazes home, we have a lot of helpers that are making this possible for us. When I was a child, my mother always told me, whenever I saw something scary or frightening on TV, to always look for the helpers. Because where there's helpers, there's hope. So we have helpers like the firefighters, police officers, paramedics, ambulance attendants and EHS. Even our teachers are helpers. They're not helping us the same way they're used to in a classroom, but they're giving us help at home and checking in and giving our parents help as we learn from home. Even our grocery store workers are essential workers right now, essential helpers. They're helping us to stay at home by giving us groceries and making sure that we all have food to eat. And probably one of the most important help, essential workers right now are all our healthcare workers, the doctors, the nurses, the housekeeping staff, all the people that are working in the health, health field and the people that are trying to find vaccines and medicines to treat this virus. And one of the helpers that maybe we take for granted are our parents. And God gave us our parents to be our biggest helpers as we're growing up. In the Bible, John tells us that Jesus promised that he would ask God the Father to send us a helper. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our time of need. He helps us to pray to the Father. He helps to comfort us. He helps to encourage us. So probably the Holy Spirit is one of the biggest helpers at all, of all. So right now we're going to say a prayer and we're going to thank God for sending us the Holy Spirit as well as for sending us all our community helpers. You guys can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us comfort and help in our time of need. And thank you for all our community workers help keep them safe and strong. And Lord, as we wait out this virus and all the changes that come about it, be with us and help us to know that you are always there. Amen. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of violent wind came from heaven. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit had gifted them. Peace be with you. Shanti. Der Friede sei mit dir. Juni Pian. Que le peso avec toi. La pasea con vosotros. In the book of John, we read that Jesus promised his disciples that the Holy Spirit would be present in their lives. Before leaving them, he gave the disciples an amazing gift, his peace, the peace of Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, this gift lives still, and it is ours to share with others. Reach out to those around you and offer Christ's gift with these words. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace before us, peace behind us, peace under our feet. Peace within us, peace over us, let all around us be peace. Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ under our feet. Christ within us, Christ over us, let all around us be Christ. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. 
all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Now this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Holy word. From the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. 
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, for your word that gives life. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that makes your word come alive in our hearts and our lives. We ask you today, this morning, to grant us your Holy Spirit, to fill us with your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit may make your word come alive, that we may learn and grow in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The big day has finally come. The waiting is finally over. Jesus had asked them to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the power. He was going to send them soon. Luke 24, verse 9. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. It was on an important Jewish celebration called the Festival of the Harvest, and the followers of Jesus were together in one place. Despite all the chaos that had happened, they continued to meet together, finding mutual comfort and fellowship with each other. I think that there's an important lesson for us today, because there's been a subtle misunderstanding that has crept into the church over the recent decades. An idea that your faith is only a personal thing that needs no public connections or corporate expression. The ancient church knew that faith and fellowship had an important link. So we hear again that they were together when this great moment, this great moment that God was orchestrating took place. I think that's what has been so difficult for us recently. We were so used to being able to gather and socialize, to meet and support each other through the good times and the bad times. But now we're asked not to gather for the greater good, for our vulnerable. So we miss our ability to get together to worship, to visit, to pray, to learn, and to give encouragement and comfort to each other. The early disciples waited together. They were blessed together, and they spoke by the Spirit together. And because of that event, Peter's message to the people who had seen this take place, 3,000 new believers were added to their number that day. Then we hear about their life after this great revival. In the book of Acts, Luke records their life together. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to another one who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Acts chapter 2 verses 40 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to each other to fellowship, 
to meeting together, eating together, to praising God together, to learning together, to helping each other if in need. And God it added to their numbers every day. One of the greatest social ills that we are facing today is isolation, social isolation. Studies show that people who are socially active in their communities and especially their churches live longer, happier, healthier lives. This information should not surprise us who have been in the church all of our lives. We all know the strength that we get because we have a church family. But like any family or even organization, you get back what you invest. Another way to understand it, when you come forward, invest your time, your talents, and your treasure, you will find that you get back from that investment, growing friendships, feelings of satisfaction and accomplishment, a feeling of belonging, and a greater purpose for a greater good. There are so many benefits from being part of the church family. That's why those early disciples met together so much. Yes, I know, there are, is no doubt times of conflict and pain in the church as with any relationship we truly care about. Those are normal relationship characteristics, but they are not the predominant ones. In fact, in our Christian setting, we are called to have love as our primary characteristic. If love is not the primary characteristic of any congregation, then we've missed the mark. We have heard the scripture in this gospel reading these past weeks, Jesus telling his disciples in his farewell discourse, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, he says. John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. If love it does not uniquely mark us out as followers of Jesus, we are not who we think or say we are, as St. Paul tells the church in Corinth. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all that I possess to the poor and my body over to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. But I ask, how can we practice love if we do not commit ourselves to relationships with others? If we never meet together, how can we practice that love? If we never give ourselves or sacrifice of ourselves to others, for others, how can we demonstrate love? In his letter to the church in Rome, we heard Paul say, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The phrase Paul uses, we suffer with him, is important. The Greek word used here is sympasko, from a combining of two words, sim and pasco. Pasco means to experience and endure suffering. That is what Jesus did for us because of love. The sim word means with. Paul is calling us to suffer with Jesus. Risk ourselves in loving others as Christ demonstrated God's love for us. We are being called by Jesus to risk ourselves in the act of loving others. Love, as I've explained before in the scriptures define, is not the same as what the world defines it right now, which is so connected to an emotional response. But love in the scriptures is always dictated by action. And we are called to that 
as demonstrated by Christ himself. The act of self-giving for the sake of others is what Jesus did for us. This is only possible with the power of the Holy Spirit, who now is living in us, who claim Christ as our Lord. He would remind them in his words in John 15, verses 6 through 8, If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. To love one another is bearing that fruit. And empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are called to love as Christ loved us. Amen. you for your loving presence with us. Come Holy Spirit, take and transform our societies. That broken people find healing, that lonely people find love, that bitter people find peace, and that fearful people find hope. Come Holy Spirit, take our world's leaders and governments and bring renewal. That communication can be open, that relationships between hostile people and hostile nations will evaporate. That a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food felt by so many. Come Holy Spirit, fill your church, that our worship will be ever more pleasing to you, that our prayers will change our minds instead of trying to get you to change yours, that our lives will make a real difference to real people in the real world. Come Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all that we do and say and hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others. Let us pray for those close to our heart. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with Mary Ann, with Joan, with Sandra, with Arnie, with Peter, with Paul, with Stephen, with Florence, with Bruce, with Marjorie, with Kim, with Hannah, with Wendy, and with Peggy. We especially lift up to you this morning 
the family of John McGinnis. Surround them with your love and your strength as they journey through a time through the valley of shadows. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us remember to always pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all that you have blessed us in this world. Everything we are, even our very breath that we breathe in this moment, is a gift from you. From all that you have given us, you have called on us to give back to this broken world and to your ministry. Receive what we have given in these plates as our treasure, and what we have given in our times and our talents, we ask you to bless for the sake of Jesus Christ, the one who gave us everything for love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Jesus Christ give hope to your dreaming, and may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.